Is there anything too hard for God? With man, it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Welcome to Hope Today. I'm Angela Madden. I'm here today with Matt Cogley. And apparently, we got the memo Let's, to be in neutral Let's and black. Go. <laughs> Come on. I know what you're, you're watching, you're wondering at home. Man, are we related? What's going on? <laughs> no, we're just led by the Spirit. That's, that's, that's right. what we're on point with our outfits today, okay? We match. <laughs> but listen, okay, as much as I'm excited about our outfits, guys, for you watching, please stay tuned because our guest today, his name's Brian Rucker. He is a powerful, powerful, life-changing and impacting testimony he's going to share from a young age, just the experience from addictions and just, man, life's challenges to even to a point where he had an encounter through Duck Dynasty, which we'll get into that hopefully, which I'm sure you're going to want to know what it's all about. But it's all about a second chance, the power of God and Jesus giving us a second chance, Angela. And speaking yes. of second chances, we're in this new year, an yes. opportunity of chances, right? Yes. I love stories like this that are like so dynamic in transformation and change because it gives me hope in every space that I walk in, no matter what I face, God can change yeah. anything. And we are, we're in a new year. Yes. Yes, it's a yes, time yes. for a new thing. There's great expectancy mm -hmm. in the air. Yeah, I love that expectancy. One thing you were sharing about earlier, which was just on my heart at the beginning of the year, and I'm just dissecting a couple of things as we always do at the beginning of the year, but, but just that scripture came alive to me is that all things are possible to those who believe. I, I don't know who that's for watching right now. You might be facing some type of impossible situation, whether it's for your business, a family member, you're waiting for those resources, those connections, whatever it might be. And it looks impossible in the natural times, right? But all things, listen, the Bible says all things, not some things, not just little interest, all things are possible to those who believe. And I, I, I honestly believe at the end of this testimony with our interview today, you're going to come alive to that scripture and knowing that once you hear what God is able to do, you're going to know in this upcoming year, whatever challenges, whatever things might come up, you know, all things are possible to you. So, hey, our next guest, uh, his story shows that it is possible to overcome the difficulties of a broken past and receive a second chance at life. Brian Rucker, Rucker struggled with both alcohol and addiction before he felt the love of Christ take hold of his life. He was hired for a job by the Duck Dynasty Robertson family, and that's when his life was forever changed. Brian joins us now to share his story, to offer encouragement that it's never too late for God to turn lives around. Brian, it's great to have you with us here on Hope Today. Hey, it's great to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I want to dive a little bit in just to, just to introduce you, you know, to our audience. Um, you know, you grew up in Houston, Texas, right? And so maybe you can tell us yeah. just a little bit about your childhood there growing up. Yeah, so I grew up in Houston, Texas, uh, you know, inner city neighborhood uh, riddled with uh, criminal activity, violence, just all the things of the world, uh, for sure. And so, you know, growing up there, it was all black community. So I used to have to fight every day. I used to fight before I got on the bus, when I was on the bus, when I got off the bus, mm -hmm. uh, until eventually I was just another kid in the neighborhood and, you know, kind of started getting involved with, uh, all the things that the neighborhood had to offer. Yeah. I remember hearing a little bit about, you know, your testimony prior and, and even at just a young age, Right. You, you had probably gone through some things that many people might not have faced, especially, you know, involving in drugs. Could you share a little bit about what was that like in your time? You know, how old were you and gosh, what did you go through? Yeah, so uh, I'll put it like this. You know, the first time I seen someone get shot, I was nine years old. Uh, and that's a tough reality to try to wrap your mind around at that age. Uh, I used to watch shows like Family Matters, Full House and uh, you know, I, I just realized after that day that life here was different than what I was seeing on those shows. Uh, it made me feel like it was all just not a reality at all. Uh, so by the time uh, I was 11, I had started uh, smoking weed, selling weed. Uh, by the time I was 12, I was selling crack cocaine, uh, involved with a gang, um, just kind of all being a part of that atmosphere, that environment, and just what it had to offer and really what it promoted. Uh, again, being there, I was feeling like I was just trying to survive. 
so I just dove into uh, everything that I could to just make that happen. Yeah. Was there a certain turning point, you know, that you can remember in particular that really just kind of changed your perspective saying, I've, I've got to get out of this. I know you're sharing a little bit about you're watching some of those TV shows at the time, but what was it in particular that you said, okay, something's got to change, something's got to move? Well, so it wasn't until years later. So, uh, you know, I've, I found my mom dead whenever I was 13 years old. Um, you know, as it was a result of malpractice, but they sent her home and uh, I went to wake her up and she had passed away. And uh, that was on December 19th, so it was right before Christmas time. And uh, I remember that the paramedics showed up, they sat me down, they told me that my mother passed away. And uh, I cried for maybe a minute. And after that, I just got super angry. And uh, I remained angry for years. Uh, less than six months later, while I'm still 13 years old, I get incarcerated for the first time. Uh, I'm supposed to do nine months. I end up doing two and a half years. So I'm locked up from 13 to 16 years old, get out, uh, get linked up with uh, some uh, pretty established uh, people in the narcotics uh, distribution uh, arena and uh, start moving large quantities of narcotics uh, all across southern United States. Um, and then in 2007, whenever I was 17 years old, uh, I got indicted uh, on a, a gang-related shooting in which a person died. Uh, and so then I'm looking at the rest of my life uh, in prison. Um, you know, I, I fought that charge for, for years, uh, ended up going to prison, uh, then ended up beating the charges several years later, get released. Uh, I end up right back in the same neighborhood I was at, you know, so there's this mental roller coaster of all these things I went through, literally having my life taken away from me uh, by the judicial system due to my actions. Um, and then here I am right back in the same neighborhood where everything happened at. Wow. And, uh, and I get in, uh, pretty much harassed by the police as soon as I get back there because they're like, hey, you're not supposed to be here. We, we put you away. You're, you're supposed to still be in prison. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment that I was like, okay, I got to get out of Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, it wasn't even about like, um, you know, a relationship with Jesus or anything like that, because I grew up totally atheist. Uh, mm -hmm. Even while I was incarcerated, I, I you know, still practiced that atheism. Um, but it was in that moment that I was like, I got to get out of Houston. Something's got to change. And then that ultimately through God, you know, relentlessly chasing after us, no matter how jacked up we are, right. uh, ultimately put me in a position to be in Monroe, Louisiana. And, uh, I get introduced to the Robertsons and they, they tell me about this guy named Jesus. Wow. Can we talk about a little bit about that? One key thing that you said earlier, you know, is the linking up of people, right? And, and if you link up with the wrong people, obviously it can lead you down this path of destruction that nobody intends for, right? But then all of a sudden now you're here at this point and you're, you're linked up with the Robertson family. Gosh, help, help us see what that picture looked like. You know, yeah. what was that encounter like? Well, you know, I tell people like this, you know, I, I'm a counselor now. And so I, I say, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Uh, and so, you know, usually if you're around people that are doing things that are worldly and going to put you in a bad spot, that's probably where you're going to end up too. Uh, you know, these guys, man, uh, I showed up to work for them. Literally, they just gave me an opportunity, uh, which the way that I got there is kind of a story within itself. Uh, nobody knew who I was. They're like, who the heck is this guy? And uh, they give me an opportunity. And uh, I start working for them. They hear about where I was from and the things I'd went through. They felt like I was there for a reason. Um, and, you know, they did something that I, I think most people uh, sometimes forget that we're supposed to do. They didn't open up a Bible. They didn't point to any verses. They didn't tell me how I needed to obey the gospel or uh, I was doomed. Uh, what they did is simply say the words, we love you. And it was something about them loving me and extending that care and compassion to me that softened my heart and provoked my mind to an alternative way of thinking. Yeah. Um, and so 
from there, they would just invite me to church with them. Uh, if I'm being honest, the first time I went to church was just to kind of get in where I fit in. I figure I'll go to church. They'll see me going. Maybe they give me a raise or something. Uh, and so, you know, I, but I went and I listened. And the more I went, the more I listened. And the more I listened, everything that didn't make sense made sense if I put God in the equation. And uh, so I was like, God, if you're real, uh, let's see. And about a month later, Phil Robertson's baptizing me. Wow. Wow. I think it's kind of funny because, you know, obviously a lot of people know the show Duck Dynasty, you know, and so we, we see that family as celebrities in a sense or only through a screen. You know them on a, on a different level, but what's something, you know, behind the scenes that you could share that had really transformed you? You know, maybe was it one of them reaching out to you at a certain point? You know, because it seems like they're definitely the real deal, not just this oh, yeah. facade on the screens. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was almost like the entire family, more so than just the family, the entire company of everybody at Duck Commander just kind of walked out the stuff that they were talking. I mean, I thought I was in a twilight zone whenever I moved here and I got linked up with all them because those like those shows uh, that I would watch when I was a kid that I said, that's just a fairy tale. That stuff doesn't really exist. Well, guess what? With Jesus and putting that at the center of everything in your life, mm. that type of life does exist. Like, I mean, you can live with peace. You can live in uh, in community with your family, enjoy time together. And so it was just that example. Uh, I remember one time calling somebody, um, you know, one of my friends in Houston and saying, like, man, this place is crazy. Like, they, these people are, like, actually good people. You know, like, it's just because it's so unheard of where I come from. Not saying that there's not any good people in Houston, Texas, because I'm sure there is. But I'll say this. They ain't in my neighborhood. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> my neighborhood, my, my neighborhood was a little bit different, you know. Um, so, you, you know, it was just all of them collectively. And then they gave me opportunities when nobody else was willing to give me a chance. Mm -hmm. I remember McDonald's and Taco Bell wouldn't hire me. Uh, like, literally, I, I went into an interview at Taco Bell, and I sat down, and I'll tell you, like, yeah, man, well, we'd love to hire you, you know. Uh, but according to your background and everything you told me, I got to talk to the mm -hmm. regional supervisor or whatever. I was just like, okay. But, you know, these guys, uh, they, they were like, hey, we'll – We'll, we'll take a chance on them. It is such a powerful story, Brian, and I am here to tell you there are good people in Houston. My family's <laughs> there. So, <laughs> but, but just really quickly, you know, you, you went through some hard things at a young age and you lived in this place of, you know, being surrounded by constant, almost chaos. How did you come to a place of kind of letting that go and really being able to forgive God for what I'm sure you had a lot of questions for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, it was more of a, uh, uh, I, 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 so I had a, I had my son and me and his mom split up and, and that was before I ended up here in Monroe. And after having my son, the only thing I was truly afraid of was him having a life like mine. Um, and, you know, this is just one of those things that sometimes I tell people about, like, you know, I had my son uh, out of marriage. Uh, you know, it kind of came out of a, what we would call sinful situation. But my son uh, was the first uh, layer of softening my heart for me to be receptive to the gospel. Like God used that um, and, and, you know, when you talk about, uh, just, you know, the different things that we talk about in this world today, uh, it, it, like, man, you never know what God's going to use. And so, um, after having my son, uh, I definitely wanted something to change. Uh, and then after working at duck commander, I knew that change was possible. And, uh, you know, I've always been a pretty curious person. So it's like, Hey, you tell me about this guy, Jesus, and uh, my life doesn't make sense unless there's a God that has a plan and purpose for my life. Mm -hmm. So let me open up this, uh, this, this, this uh, Bible and see uh, what it's all about. And I opened it up and I started reading it and God just spoke to me through it. 
Speaking of opening up the Bible, Brian, I, I know this is a scripture that's near and dear to your heart in Romans 8. It says, For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right, I kind of love what Angela had asked you here a little bit earlier too. I'm just thinking about everything you have gone through in your life and it's where maybe most people might not have even recovered from, right? And so mm -hmm. what in this moment could you speak to because here in Pittsburgh, there, there, it's a heavy drug rate of addictions and whatnot, and, and not even just addictions, trauma, right? Anything that people go through. Yeah. What's one thing that you, know, you could speak to for anyone that's facing some type of bondage in their life? Like what made you and helps you to recover that you speak into people's lives? You know, uh, we are all riddled by this uh, sin disease. You know, because essentially that's what sin is. It's a disease. For something to be labeled as a disease, it has to be two things. Mm -hmm. It has to be progressive, but it also has to be treatable. And mm -hmm. the beautiful thing is we know the great physician, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And whenever we point people to the true physician that can heal anything that we are riddled with, uh, it changes everything. So for me, um, in walking out a intimate close relationship with jesus uh it has just over time layer by layer healed different things whether it be uh you know the the first immediate thing of me just having a problem with a lifestyle and a mindset to even the more layered things such as my childhood trauma and um you know the uh abandonment issues the need to be accepted and and now even in working on how to be a married man with all the issues that i once had and still have you know yeah. Uh, I think that's why we never get to a point to where we arrive. You know, God is always, always working on us and just molding us and, and building us into the person that he wants to use to bring him glory. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I, that scripture, that's why that scripture is so important to me, because, I mean, I'm a guy that has messed it up every single way that you could possibly mess it up. Uh, I'm a person that continuously messes it up every single way that you could possibly mess it up. Uh, but there is uh, neither heights nor depths or anything else in all of creation that'll separate the love that God has for us through Jesus Christ. So that means it's not based on my performance. It's based in his love for us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how do you help people? Man, you point them to Jesus. Uh, I've went from, you know, being incarcerated for the rest of my life for shooting someone, you know, to, you know, being on a TV show. And now I'm an addiction counselor here in the state of Louisiana. I'm the director of Celebrate Recovery. Uh, I'm a minister here at our church at uh, White's Ferry Road. And man, it like, I cannot take any credit for any of that. Like, if you were, how'd you do it, Brian? I, I don't, I, Jesus, he did it. I really didn't. The uh, only thing that I was willing to do is whenever he said step, I step. Whenever he said move, I move. And uh, and here we are. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, next year, five years from now. But uh, when he says move, I move. And whenever he tells me to stand still, I'll stand still. Amen. Well, hey, you know, we believe in the power of prayer, Brian. And if you wouldn't mind, you know, we've got about a minute here left with you. Could you say just a quick prayer for anyone out there that might be battling with those type of struggles? Yeah, absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning grateful, grateful for who you are, what you've done uh, for the cross. God, we just pray that uh, you be with anybody under the sound of my voice that is struggling, uh, whether the struggle be addiction depression, anxiety, fear, uh, trauma. God, we just pray that you uh, do what you do and that's move mountains to get to them and get them to know you and your son that can produce uh, a life change for them. God, we just pray that you be uh, with this show, you be with uh, everybody involved, uh, even the people behind the scenes. God, we just ask that your mercy is new for us every day, which is a promise. Uh, we love you so much and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Brian, thanks so much for your time and your vulnerability and, and sharing your testimony and, and even everything you're currently doing in many people's lives there, you know, facing those addictions. We're really grateful for this time we got to spend with you today. Yeah, likewise, man. Super grateful. Appreciate what y'all are doing. This is awesome. Absolutely. So Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. Thanks, you too. Man, you know, one thing I, I'm just, gosh, this conversation with Brian, I can't help but just to be reminded of the scripture that God truly works all things out yes. for the good, right? And everything that's meant for evil, he'll turn yes. for the good. I mean, you, you can't help but to, to listen to a man's story like this and, and him having to face what he did at such a young age yes. and see where he is today and say, that's not, that's, I, I mean, it's very evident to me that God truly can turn and use things for his good. Yeah, it's such a story of redemption mm -hmm. and of beauty yeah. to think that God would cause him to move from Houston, Texas, mm. take him to Monroe, yeah. Louisiana, yeah. and that he would meet the God of salvation. Oh, wow. It's powerful. Yeah. You know, right after this break, you're going to hear yet another story of beautiful redemption and how God wants to paint your world with new colors. We'll be right back. If self-help isn't getting you anywhere, it's time for God's power. Have you grown accustomed to bad habits, written off lifelong battles as unwinnable, or believed that some destructive behaviors can never be altered? Then The Seven Resolutions is for you. This book will teach you how to overthrow old patterns, create new life systems, and take hold of God's promises. Resolve to join God, think truth, kill sin, choose friends, take risks, focus effort, and redeem time. Never settle for too little. The time is now for humble dependence on God and a plan to walk in His power. It's time to come alive in 2024. Request the seven resolutions when you give to support Cornerstone Television this month. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Help us spread the gospel with renewed strength in 2024. Thank you. If you were just with us and got to hear Brian's powerful testimony, I know you are moved in understanding what redemption truly looks like. You know, I have a friend who had something very similar. She went through a very difficult past and, and, and growing up um, had a lot of trauma. And she decided to give her life to the Lord just about two years ago. And she said something so powerful to me. She said, Ange, after I prayed that prayer, it was as if a film came off of my eyes and I was seeing in color for the first time. My mind was blown away because I'd never heard anyone express or explain a salvation experience like that. She said, literally, I looked around the world and the colors were brighter. You know, today, wherever you are, God wants to paint your world with brighter and better colors. He is a God of redemption. He is a God of second, third, and fourth chances. He is a God who sees right where you are and wants to be with you in the midst of it. So maybe today you feel alone and yet you know Jesus. He says, call to me. Or maybe you are like Brian before he met this awesome king who transformed his life and made his heart a heart of flesh instead of stone. If that's you today, God says, cry and I'll answer. Call to me. I want to make you new. Scripture tells us that if a man be born again, that is when he can enter the kingdom of God. And all the old things are past. Behold, a new creation. Today, God has a new creation within you. And he wants you to look into the world and see his beautiful hand of mercy. If you need prayer, we encourage you today to call our prayer line at 888-665-4483, where we have people on standby ready to pray with you and walk you through this moment. You know, Matt, I think that sometimes, like Brian, we find ourselves in such delicate states and, and hard hearts that it's hard to reach out to Jesus, mm -hmm. but he changes everything for us. Absolutely. Yeah, I overheard a conversation with somebody that said like everything in their life didn't make sense until Jesus, you know, and even after this relationship with God, sometimes things are still going to look like what's going on 
but then Jesus, right? Yes. Or, but God. And I feel like in this moment, maybe some of you in, in gosh, you, you don't know what tomorrow brings, like Brian said, and, and some of you might even be entering into this new year. And I, I know you hear us full of faith. We're saying this is gonna be the best year. And some of you might be sitting there saying, well, how could that be when I'm going through this? It doesn't make sense. Could I encourage you? I, I love if we could pull this scripture up again in Romans. For I am convinced, listen to this, it's an absolute assurance that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Listen, you could run as far away as you possibly want, but God will continually chase you down. Nothing will separate you. You could fall flat on your face and lose everything. God will still be a part, Angela, with you all along the way. And maybe we can curse some people right now. Maybe we can quickly pray for them of some things that we might not be knowing what they're going through. Yes. But let's just take this time and pray real quick. Yes. Father, we thank you that you are a God who loves us that no matter what we've gone through, no matter what we've decided or we have done, your love for us never fails. Today, Father, we ask that every person who is listening, God, they open their heart and they receive your love, that they would know you see them as worthy of your son's great sacrifice on the cross. Today, Father, touch mend, transform, and fill your people with a hope beyond hope. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, thank you guys so much for, for watching with us today. What a powerful testimony. If you know somebody that's just going through some addictions or struggles or life challenges, I want to encourage you, please share today's interview and conversation. I know for a fact it will sow seeds into the life of eternity. It's going to encourage them. And I want to encourage you watching at home. God sees you. God knows you. God is with you. Whatever it is that you're facing or whatever it is that's yet to come, all I can say is this, the best is truly yet to come for you because God uses that which is meant to be evil and he uses it for your good. I hope today blessed you. Be a blessing to somebody else. Have a great weekend. I know God's got a great purpose in store for your new year.